matter what the purists say, gimmicks works in MMA just as well as they do in professional wrestling. Still got your Obama phone? I had an Obama phone. Yeah, you f did, yeah, you yeah, lying ass piece yeah. of Shut the You're a lying ass piece of <laughs> Hey, that's right. <laughs> Talking sales and thousands of viewers tune into each and every press conference hoping that someone, anyone, would raise hell and put on a show. Unfortunately, despite a lot of Conor McGregor wannabes in the overall sport, very few end up capturing the attention of the masses. Without charisma, you weren't raising hell, you're just babbling. And without a record of kicking ass, you're just a laughing stock. See why it's so difficult to work a shtick? They all talk, but a select few actually get people to care. Recently, a guy by the name of Sean Strickland gained notoriety. Hey, what was it like? 2 0 against Izzy? Izzy, what was it? 2 0? Did you watch the whole fight? No, I don't watch Exactly, fight. do your f job next time. Oh. oh man, I made the champion man with his frosted tips and his gay little watch. Oh no! And in a few days, he will be competing for the middleweight championship. Once universally despised, but now a fan favorite, here is the story of Sean Strickland, the self-proclaimed angry psychopath. There is so much controversy and chaos surrounding the challenger, and at this point, that is all that we expect from him. But there is a story behind every top-level fighter, and Strickland is no different. At UFC 171, Sean Strickland made his promotional debut, and at first glance, he seemed like an ordinary dude. He was brought in as a late replacement, and he said the usual. Mr. Sean Strickland, taking on Bubba McDaniel, a veteran of the sport, but you are as well. Maybe the UFC fans don't know you as much. You weren't on the Ultimate Fighter, but you have a great record. Came on from King of the Cage. Yeah, I mean, I, I've been around, but I finally got the opportunity to prove myself in the UFC, and I'm, I'm pretty excited. Can't wait for that opportunity. Excited to be part of the UFC, becoming champion, all standard stuff. We never knew back then. And I, I, in my mind, I was registering, okay, Sean, sure, throw a head kick. But you know when you're out there and you're in retard mode, I mean, pressure down. Yeah, I mean, in disrespect. We'll bleed it. All right, we'll bleed it. His first few fights were enough to demonstrate the guy had potential, but being a welterweight wasn't working out for him. And at one point, he was 2-2 two two in his last four, and after an impressive victory over Nordine Taleb, Strickland was involved in a motorcycle accident that nearly ended his professional career. Whenever I first had my accident, I had a lot of doctors. Every doctor I spoke to was telling me that, hey, you can fight for sure, but you probably shouldn't fight. So the hardest thing was just kind of telling these doctors to shut up, like you don't know what I can or can't do. But the moment, the moment I started training it after about a year, after about a year back, being in the gym, being in the octagon, warming up, man, it just feels home. It feels like I belong here. Admitted by the man himself, MMA was what saved his life, and Sean was not ready to quit on his dream just yet. His knee was crippled in the accident, but after two years of rest and rehabilitation, Tarzan once again entered the UFC octagon, and he was a totally different guy. Nah, man, I wanna fucking, you know, try to kill him, man, and get paid. Strickland returned during the height of the first COVID, so maybe he thought a character would bring in more viewers. It's rare we see someone say, okay, I'm gonna give you a chance to win. <laughs> Let's go. I'll give you a chance to win. As I said it, as I said it, simultaneously, I'm picturing me in the back room, sitting down, knocked out in the corner, and my coach is looking at me like, Sean, you're an idiot. I don't know what happened to the guy, but his filter was entirely it's gone. Like, I, I don't even think morality exists in my brain, so why the fuck am I named after a Disney character? I was younger, had long hair, and everyone was like, oh, well, like you, he's wild, he has long hair, Tarzan. It was fucking gay. I probably thought he'd get me laid when I was a dumb kid, and I'd like tell women that I'm emotional. I watch like a Disney movie, suck my dick. And he started talking insanity, even surpassing Kobe I'm Covington. Like, I'm, almost, I'm almost hoping Russia fucking nukes us. Just so our fucking nuts get a little bigger, dude. You guys are too no soft. No one was safe. Strickland brought the heat against fellow fighters, media members, and even fans. And while he was definitely entertaining and flat out hilarious, the public didn't appreciate his brand of selling fights. Or maybe he was actually being real. From admitting that he wanted to kill his opponent inside the cage. If I kill someone in the ring, I'd fucking make me very happy. You, you mean that? Oh, I love it, absolutely. To threatening Kevin Holland. I don't I think I told him I could rape him in prison one day and it bothered him. But I'm just saying the facts, dude. I'm just saying the fucking facts, man. If me and you were in a jail cell together and I wanted to, like, I could take that ass. Strickland was just too wild and controversial for the masses. But then he showed up to the UFC 276 pre-fight press conference, looking like he had to take a detour from grocery shopping. This was his moment, and Strickland seized the opportunity. This is my first press conference. You guys are a bunch of vicious bastards. Man, here's the way you guys talk. 
I want to go down there and punch all you in the face. He set his sights on the middleweight champion Israel Adesanya and stole the entire show. No man that beats off the cartoons is going to beat me. Bro, Calm trust down. me. If Calm you ever, down. I can tell you what. If you win this fight, when we fight, I knock you out. I'm going to do a TikTok dance over your grave. Oh, fuck it. Look at this grown-ass man on TikTok. Even if you found him insane, you have to admit the exchange with Israel was pretty funny. Bro, I will right there. I smacked you on your ass. The fuck you do? Listen, bro. You're going to break a now, calm down. I break your yeah. face. When you can make Robbie Lawler laugh, you know you can talk people into the building. One back and forth with the champion, and suddenly, Adesanya versus Strickland seemed promising, even if just solely for the buildup. Sadly, Strickland lost his ticket to title contention when Alex Pereira knocked him out, and in the next fight, he dropped a controversial decision to Jared Kenmir. And just like that, Strickland was stuck in gatekeeper mode for the rest of his career. Never underestimate the chaotic will, though. Strickland was in the public eye for a grand total of 24 hours, but that was enough to propel him. After the two defeats, Strickland stepped up for the company and the fans and scored back-to-back -back wins against Imovov and Magomed. And throughout all of this, he kept his aim on Israel, never missing a chance to roast the middleweight champion. I see Izzy before Dreykus, you know, before Dreykus beats Whitaker, and I, you know, I call him a Chinese. <laughs> Not, not, not because, not because I'm trying to be a dick. I'm just trying to say how it is. Let's get some fresh blood in there. Let's throw some new meat at him. Maybe I, maybe I got something he don't have. You know, maybe we take it to deep water, see what's up. So give me the title, you guys. You guys know you want to see it. We don't want to see Dracus fight, is he? And rightful number one contender declined the fight due to an injury. It was Sean Strickland, the unlikely title challenger who accepted the fight. And here we are with UFC 293 right around the corner, and Sean Strickland in the main event against one of the greatest middleweights of all time. Funny how it works out for the underdogs. Behind the bold trash talk and copious amounts of edge lies a sad tale. Strickland survived through an abusive and traumatic childhood, and as he has said time and time again, mixed martial arts saved his life. I used to sleep in my mom's bed a lot, right? Because I thought, I mean, we're talking about like, oh, when I shunned in like elementary school, because I like I thought my dad was gonna fucking kill my mom. So every night, dude, I would like. I would go to bed thinking like, oh shit, my mom's gonna die tonight, you know? But his words, not mine, so like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you gotta learn to laugh at it, right? At least, yeah. he didn't, at least he didn't fuck me. FC 293 is more than just the Israel Adesanya show. Strickland is a lively underdog, and this has been a long road for him as well. If he pulls off the upset in the main events, anarchy will be unleashed. But in the backdrop of such chaos, a once broken man achieves his lifelong dream. As much as I hate being in there and I think it shortens my life, it is the only time I feel like I'm alive. It's the only time that I feel like I'm just not waiting to die when I'm in there fighting. And even though I hate it, it gives me purpose. Hope you enjoyed. But I gotta bounce. I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace out.